my guiding force is what makes you feel at peace um, mm. and kind of like choosing your next steps or your day or your you know your right now yeah, with that and that's kind of how I that's kind of what I want to bring into my songwriting um, it's not always happy it's not always sad um, but I want there to be beauty in in kind of it all and in, in kind of the mess of being a, a human being. Welcome to the Paul Plett Podcast. This is basically an excuse for me to sit down and have a conversation with people that I find interesting. And joining me today is Shay Wolf. Hello. Welcome here. <laughs> Shay is a musician, an artist, a teacher, a wife, and a pet parent. That's right. A um, pet mom. I'm a, oh yeah, a pet mom. <laughs> Welcome here, Shay. Thank you so much for having me, Paul. For people who don't know you, have never met you, how would you introduce yourself? Who are you? What do you do? You know, I, so I was driving here and I was thinking, okay, you know, am I, am I just an artist? Am I just a musician? No. Um, is that how I express myself? Yes. Do I say that? I knew you'd ask me. And so I thought, okay, I'm a, a musician. Um, as you mentioned, I'm a, a pet parent. I'm a wife. I'm a, I'm a sister. Um, I'm a dreamer. I love to dream. Um, but I think I'm somebody who's trying to find myself. You know, I, I think, and, and I, I think I do that moment to moment, day to day, year to year. Um, not that I'm in search of something, but I always think, is this true for me? Is this how I want to show up in the world? And um, so as an artist, mm -hmm. I think about those things and I'm think then I express it mm -hmm. in song and piano and in any way I can. What do you like to dream about? Oh, I love to dream about, I mean, like real things, tangible things, yeah. like traveling. For somebody that lives in Winnipeg, I love the ocean. I dream mm. about the ocean and water yeah. a lot. Yeah. Um, I dream about just like a perfect world, you know, okay. being nice to each other. Yeah. Things like that. Yeah. Yeah. Where, where are you from? Where'd you grow up? I grew up on a farm outside of Regina, Saskatchewan. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, and in my songwriting, I find, you know, you don't know. I remember my stepdad had said to me, this, you'll always call this home. Uh huh. And I never like loved Regina. Okay. And so I was like, no, I won't. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but it's home, like the big skies and I've always lived in the prairies. Well, kind of always. Yeah. Um, big skies and lots of space and nature and, and, uh, it's contributed to a large part of who I am. Yeah. yeah. And you think like your identity, like you self identify most as a, as a musician, as an artist through music, through song. Yes. Yeah. I grew up playing classical piano. Okay. Competitively. Really? Yeah. Um, what was that like? Stressful. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Playing classical music is so interesting. Have you ever played? Classical yeah. Music? I, I remember like growing up, I took piano lessons and I always dreamed. It was one of those, I always dreamed about like, oh, maybe if I was really good. Yeah. I never had the, the dedication. I don't even know if I had the talent to get that good, but like yeah. just dreaming of like being a. So you were, were you like a, like a, a, a prodigy? <laughs> No. <laughs> okay. When no, did you... Okay, maybe I should rephrase. Yeah. Uh, no, I was not a prodigy. Uh -huh. I was somebody that, I think, I think growing up on the farm, like you spend your time doing things, and I was lucky to ha have been put into piano. Yeah. And so I just, you know, I practiced. Like, I mean, more as I got older, and it okay. was more serious. But no, I, I only like competed at the provincial level never like nationally yeah. or like no 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 nothing like that it was just uh very formative yeah you know what yeah. grades was that in like in in school or yeah in, like when did you compete how old were you i i 
I started competing, just like little kind of competitions mm -hmm. in grade, I think it was like six. Mm -hmm. um, I actually remember one of the first, uh, they're called adjudicators for people yeah. that don't know. Like okay. you go to a, a place and you're in like a category, let's say it's like Mozart with people of your similar level. Sure. Um, and then there's a ju an adjudicator that has the music so they know if you've made wrong notes and they likely know the pieces anyway. But anyway, mm -hmm. her name was Alexandra Munn and uh, she made like a couple of kids cry. Oh my goodness. Oh, uh, yeah. How, yeah, why, fun. what happened? I don't know. I just, I, but you know what? I remember her saying something too, which is, which is crazy. Like, um, this was like, not not 20 years ago, but like yeah. a while, yeah. maybe like 15, 18 years ago. Yeah. And uh, and she was she said something I don't know she was I think she was just really blunt and straightforward sure, sure. you know and yeah. like yeah and that can that can be uh, uncomfortable uh -huh. especially when you're how old are you in like grade six like <laughs> eleven let's go with that yeah twelve I don't yeah, yeah. eleven ten yeah a child yeah you know you're 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 building up the confidence mm -hmm. and uh, and I don't know she was just really blunt but I remember her saying something like. Uh, your best teachers are with you 24-7 um, and they are your ears and I so for somebody I, I don't think yeah. she meant to be as mean and she yeah. um, maybe came across but yeah yeah it happens you have some teachers I had a I grew up overseas I grew up in in Zambia and Sudan yeah and yeah. Um, and I had a teacher in grade nine grade eight and grade nine in sudan she was dutch oh. she was a dutch math teacher and oof, she was intense and but it was one of those things where like if you met her where she was at if you rose to the challenge mm -hmm. that's a great class mm -hmm. you know you kind of have to with some people like that you kind of have to get past that exterior mm -hmm. you know do you think that this adjudicator was like on the spectrum oh I mean potentially yeah I, I think I was too young to yeah like you know I was worried about going up there and playing my song yeah. and you know what are they gonna say about yeah. me and then being like ah <laughs> do you ever think about that? I sometimes think about that about people that we that as kids we were like that was just a, a blunt harsh person but if you got to know them there was something there yeah and just with like our understanding of mental health now mm -hmm. if we take this lens and look backwards a lot of those people I feel like we would if we knew well if you if you knew more about anybody's story yeah. but then also just that different people are wired differently mm -hmm. you know and yeah, meeting someone where they're at. I and you know, I think like as a as a kid, you know, you you really teach them about and you know, you're a parent, you yeah. you know that you probably have conversations about people that are different or yeah. you know, how we can you know, they might not they don't have to love like this person in their grade or this friend, but they have to treat them with kindness. Yeah. And I think as an adult going forward thinking these people are different than me and having the knowledge maybe around mental health or mental illness and mm -hmm. maybe not being able to um, meet them or lean in with compassion and say, mm -hmm. you know, can I get to know this person and, and learn their story and, mm -hmm. you know, see, you know, what kind of lies beneath the surface of what I see. Yeah, totally. Yeah. So uh, how, when did you... Competitive pianist. Yeah. How did you become? When did you start writing music? How did that journey? I mean, what about the singing and all that? I loved to sing. Yeah. I grew up loving to sing, and I never took lessons for singing. Mm -hmm. um, but I always sang. My grandma used to say, like, when I oh, it's happening. <laughs> it's time for coffee. <laughs> Stop what you're da, saying. Da, da. Look at the coffee. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but I used to stay at my grandma's sometimes, and she would say that um, she would, you know, put me to bed, and she would know when I fell asleep because I'd be, I'd be laying in bed, and I'd just be singing, 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 and then like she'd hear me go quiet. 
Yes. And then in the morning, she'd be up, and and then she'd hear me singing, 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 and she knew I was awake. Um, and so for me, I think like. You know, I spent years dedicating myself, thank you, mm -hmm. uh, to the piano. Mm -hmm. But singing has always been this like effortless kind of freedom in a way for me. Hmm. Um, and so growing up, I, I played piano and that really got me in touch with music and emotion. And that was always playing something that somebody else wrote. Yeah. And I always say to people, I think that music like that, it's, it's not the most popular anymore, classical music, but yeah. I think it's one of the closest things that we have to time travel. Um, and we can, I can go back and, you know, express with my own expression because I can play it. Yeah. But I'm playing something that somebody may have written, you know, a couple hundred years ago, um, which is pretty cool. Yeah. Um, but then I started songwriting in 2016. Okay. Yeah, which is a whole story in and of itself as well. I don't want to talk too much. No, what's I know that this story? Is me, yeah, what's but, that story? Tell that story. Um, as you can imagine, being on a farm. Yeah. Uh, I, I, so 2016, you're on the farm still? <sighs> outside Regina? No. Okay. Uh, 2016, I was living in Kelowna. Finishing or Kelowna, do, BC. Kelowna, BC. Okay. Uh, doing a business degree. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah, and I had gone through a breakup. Mm. So I I I did my RCM grade ten in twenty twelve, and it kind of forced the sorry this, RCM grade ten Royal Conservatory of Music. Oh yeah, it's like great. So I, I did my grade ten and. I was thinking about doing the next level, which is kind of the unleveled level. It's kind of everything else. Whoa. Um, and I was practicing like an hour and a half to two hours a day. Yeah. And I was thinking, do I want to do this mm -hmm. as a career? Do I want to be mm -hmm. a pianist as a career? Um, and I didn't think so. Competing classical music is so stressful. It's you know, I would like going up to like the front of a room on a piano that I've never played before. Mm -hmm. um, I'm, I'm guzzling water. My hands are so cold. I feel like I can't feel my fingers. I'm just a bundle of nerves. Yeah. Um, and I was like, you know what? I think I think I might just leave it there. Um, I didn't actually think that like, those thoughts yeah. specifically, but I didn't think I wanted to go into music sure um so anyway a few a few years down the path i'm in Kelowna, uh kind of part way through a bachelor's of business uh -huh. degree and i had gone through a bad breakup or not a bad breakup just it was it was hard for me yeah you know i was heartbroken and on facebook i i was i was playing guitar a little bit at the time sure and i was like you know what i I, I, I just, I feel like I want to express myself somehow. Mm -hmm. And I was playing this song and I'm like, I'm going to record a video of me singing and playing guitar on Facebook for my Facebook friends. Mm -hmm. And that scared the heck out of me, mm -hmm. that idea. Mm -hmm. Like, even like the idea that maybe I would put myself out there and, and sing in front of others, yeah. even though I'd been singing like quietly in the background in my, of my life. Yeah. Um, was terrifying. But as many kind of decisions I think are, those terrifying moments, there's a reason that you're probably terrified to do it and why well, you had the idea to do it in the first place. Yeah. So I took it as a sign of like, I'm just gonna do it. Yeah. And so I posted this video and then a friend who actually lives um, in Toulon, Manitoba, okay. uh, saw the video and said, hey, uh, would you ever consider doing a house concert and Whoa. I was once again like like heart beating and uh, and just like cheeks like automatically flush like that that's a great affirmation right out the gate though. yeah yeah and they're very supportive um, yeah. people I'm very lucky to have them in my life um, but just like those moments of like <gasps> like mm -hmm. I, I really want this but I feel so afraid. Mm. 
Um, and so I, I choked out, I, I cho it took me a couple days and I choked out a yes. Gotcha. That'll do it. Yeah. But I hadn't written any original music. Mm -hmm. And I, so I think I wrote like six songs or something for that little house concert that I did with um, a new friend of mine mm -hmm. Yeah, at the time. Yeah, so we kind of co-headlined my first uh, concert. And wow. Was, yeah. And was, that was 2016? That was 2016. Yeah. And then I met my like now husband mm -hmm. um, kind of like that summer because I was here in Manitoba. Um, and I used to think I would only live in, not only live in BC, but um, BC is just so beautiful yeah. and near the ocean. And I just, and uh, yeah, I met him and now I'm settled in, yeah. in Winnipeg. Yeah. Wow. That is amazing about when you think about places, mm -hmm. you know, because... Like I lived in, um, like I said, I grew up overseas and, and, and I lived in Toronto for a while mm -hmm. and cities like, you know, cities like Toronto and Vancouver, they're places, you mm -hmm. know, there's a real placeness to them. The place has an identity, mm -hmm. but it's interesting that like a city like Winnipeg or a place like Manitoba, it's the people. Mm -hmm. The place doesn't quite have a placeness in the same way, yeah. but it's the people that draw you here. And like, if you talk about like Kelowna or BC being so beautiful, it's just, it's a place. Yeah. It doesn't matter who's there. Yeah. The place is beautiful no matter what. But there's, when you have these places that aren't quite as, you know, they're not like big stops on the map. Mm -hmm. There's some incredible communities that grow there. Yeah. You know? Yeah, I'd spend like a couple years when I was in school in Kelowna driving back and forth. You know, I'd, mm -hmm. I'd drive out in the in the fall and I'd drive back in the spring and kind of work throughout the summer and mm -hmm. save money. And um, and so, you know, you, you watch the landscape change. Yeah. You know, you watch this kind of just open and, and I'm a forever defender of the prairies. Yeah. I find it a very um, honest beauty. And I, I, think, I think this kind of like prairie is comes into my songwriting more than I even realize, mm -hmm. but it's, it's, it's big and it's beautiful, like big skies and it's, it's can be subtle, yeah. you know? And, uh, and when, one of the first times I got to Kelowna the first year I went to school there, I think it was at like getting some things for school at Walmart or something. And this lady was just so rude. And I just remember being like, like in my head, like, don't you see where you live? Yeah. Like, it's so beautiful. How can you be like, how can you be upset or yeah. angry, you know? Yeah. Um, and so, and people say about the prairies, we're just so warm and welcoming. And it's, it's hard to know if that's true when we're, you know, we're in it. Yeah. Um, but I, I think you're right. Like there's, we focus on each other. Maybe. Yeah. I mean, there are jerks everywhere. Yes. But, yeah. but for sure. And there are great people everywhere. Um, but, but I have, I have found that, that for myself, having moved to, to Manitoba, having moved to Winnipeg mm -hmm. and kind of connected with the artistic community here, it's just, there's such a, there's a supportive artistic community. And there's also an artistic community that feels that feels ready, mm. that feels ready to participate in things. People mm -hmm. want to be a part of things, mm -hmm. yeah. which is really cool. It is really cool. And like, you know, for somebody that's not from Winnipeg originally and to be really starting an artistic career here, mm -hmm. it feels good knowing that there's kind of these like open arms of an embrace, Yeah, you know, and, and Winnipeg, like I've heard from lots of musicians that the Win Winnipeg is known for being community oriented. Yeah. Um, and it, I think it's a huge strength. Yeah. Yeah. There are also a number of people who have found, like there's a number of people from Saskatchewan, but also around the world who have sort of found a home here in Winnipeg. Mm -hmm. And it's always kind of confusing because you're like, why? <laughs> why are you here? I know. Like, I know why I'm here, yeah. but why are you here? Yeah. You know? Um, that's interesting. I know that my relationship with music, I also uh, took piano lessons kind of growing up, did not compete competitively. Mm -hmm. uh, um, but I, I, and I know that for me, I, 
sort of stopped playing piano, stopped playing music, and I came back to music when I started writing music. Mm. Are you okay with cats? Can I hold the cat? You can, yeah, can for sure. Cat? Let's see what she thinks. This is, uh, this is Lucy. This is Lucy's first appearance in this podcast. Wow. Yeah, I know that I came back to music through writing. Like playing guitar, I'm like self-taught on guitar. Mm. I love playing guitar. And then through that sort of, you know, when you have the, the, the amazing thing about learning piano or singing in choirs or whatever growing up is you have this great basis for like you understand music and how it works structurally. No? You, you, you finish your point and then I'll, I'll see. I just know that for me, <laughs> then I could pick up any other instrument and do something with it and play it and know like this is, you know, there was a, there was a way, there was a familiarity where I know that some of my peers having sort of no musical training, they might struggle a little bit more. Mm -hmm. Maybe it's a personality thing. Maybe it's something different. But my point is that I know that with my kids, mm -hmm. I just want to have instruments around. I just want to have music around. Mm -hmm. I don't care how they play it. I mean, we'll probably give them, send them to piano lessons. Mm -hmm. But just because, again, I feel like it's such a great structure. But uh, I know that I also just feel like music is, for me, I just, it's, it's just meant to be expressed in any way, mm -hmm. you know? Um, and if you're having fun with it, you can record it, you mm -hmm. can share it, mm -hmm. but it's almost just like, it's for you, it's for us, and maybe it's for them. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. um, what's, your, what's your relationship with music now? So like listening to you say that, yeah. when I like growing up playing cl classical music specifically, mm -hmm. um, just like, you know, when, when kids are in sports or something, it taught me some really valuable skills. Uh, discipline to sit there, um, attention to detail. Yeah. Um, and then as, you know, as I got more progressed and progressed more, I, I, I found like there was a, a bar, you know, of playing the notes that were laid in front of me. Mm -hmm. And I got really good at like kind of rising to the occasion. Sure. You know, playing what's there. Um, and then, you know, adding an element of yourself in it. Mm -hmm. Um, and soul. Um, but I think that kind of upbringing, uh, was a little bit more regimented and not to say that I, I, I would, I like, wouldn't do it again. Um, but in, you know, when I, when I left kind of piano in that sense, mm -hmm. I've felt like I wasn't, and I still sometimes don't feel like I'm a well-rounded, uh, musician mm. you know i can i can understand it to an extent but i was really good at playing what was in front of me mm -hmm. and kind of rising to that bar um and so you know in the years since it's kind of been this exploration and talking about somebody that's constantly kind of finding finding myself and yeah. trying to learn new things it's bringing music more to this other you know this other side of my life you know, in 2016, I also uh, played the ukulele for the first time. Whoa. Um, so, was, That's you know, a fun one. I wrote, it's so fun. Yeah. And so, you know, I started writing songs um, on, that was on piano, and all my songs are pretty much written on piano. But I, for the first time, I was able to, as you say, you know, you, and then what, what did you say? It's music is for you, and maybe it's for us, us and maybe it's for them. Maybe. Yeah. For the first time, like music was almost always for me because I was in it for hours a day. Yeah. You know, it was an intimate relationship between me and the notes. Yeah. You know, I, I gave like, got like a very, I have a lot of emotion that I could give to the notes. Yeah. Um, but with playing ukulele, it was the first time that I could step away and it was for us, you know? Mm -hmm. And so that's kind of the the spirit of songwriting 
And so anyway, so now like when I teach piano now, yeah. I try to have a bit more, uh, you know, different kind of elements of, of learning music and music being that expressiveness and, and everything. Yeah. Yeah. I know that for me, it's, it's, I mean, it's probably like you, like for me, it's emotion first, mm -hmm. you know, it's just, there are, there's no other way to express certain emotions mm -hmm. than through music. Mm -hmm. I find that for me, storytelling, there are mm -hmm. other ways I can tell stories, you know, yeah. like, um, can do it sort of through a video. You can mm -hmm. write, I, I recently started a blog, which is just like, Oh, you can just write stuff. Mm -hmm. And that's a whole other thing. But I know that for me, I've noticed that, and I just sort of had this realization like a couple months ago mm -hmm. that I, I don't play a lot of music in the summer hmm. and in the winter, especially during January, February, March, I start writing a lot more music hmm. and there's sort of that, the, that like melancholy that hmm. those emotions that just like these emotions exist. I'm not, I'm not completely depressed, mm -hmm. but I'm not like, I'm in that area. I'm sort of feeling melancholy. I want to share this. Mm -hmm. Nothing other than music sort mm -hmm. of helps me mm. get that out of my yeah. system. You know? Yeah. Wow. You're quite the multidisciplinarian <laughs> like with, with film and mm -hmm. it's nice. It's nice. I mean, I think, I think everybody has the ability to express themselves in different ways, yeah. but, um, it is nice to, yeah, to have different outlets that you know of yeah. that you can, you know, like I, I love music, Yeah, yeah. you know, obviously. Um, and people always say like, oh, I could never sing or something. And I'm sure. like, and I'm like, you, you don't have to sing. Yeah. You don't have to sing. Um, and music doesn't have to be your thing. Some yeah. people don't like music as, as hard as it is yeah. to believe. But, uh, yeah, it just like. It scratch like it scratches that yeah that itch in the in the yeah. soul kind of yeah. I used to have I remember as a kid I guess, so I grew up all over the place. Mm -hmm. I did spend part of my childhood in Manitoba in Landmark, a small town in Manitoba, and I remember listening to like, you know, like punk punk bands, mm -hmm. like local punk bands, and thinking like, how did they write music? Mm -hmm. I wish I could write music. Mm -hmm. And then later I was in living in Ontario and a bunch of us, a bunch of friends went up to a, a cottage sort of uh, north of Toronto, a couple hours north. And in this dining hall, one of my friends wrote, sang a song that he wrote. And I remember like it blew my mind. And at the same time I was like, oh, that's how you do it. Ah. Wow. It was like a, a something twigged where I was like, oh, you can take what you're feeling and just sing it. Mm. You can just express, you know, you can just mm -hmm. like that must have been. Did you have that feeling when you were doing that Facebook video that you're like, oh, I could just take this. Was it an original song? No, it was a cover song. Okay. What about when you wrote your first, like, how did you crack that? Had you always sort of done a, like original humming melodies like you said you were singing like as a kid like I'm, when did you crack the code my first song i wrote for my cat like i to be honest i i didn't really i don't think i had the confidence um to go off page mm -hmm. as a classical pianist which mm -hmm. is crazy because i'm a very creative um but I, I think I, I clung to like the music that was there and I was mm -hmm. afraid of judgment and afraid of what other people would think, Sure. you know, um, outside of that. Um, but the first, so the first like crappy song that I ever wrote, yeah. not crappy, but no, it was no, for no, my yeah. cat. It was shadow, shadow, kitty, witty, you're an angel. Not my kitty, shadow, shadow, kitty, witty, you're my 
my kitty, you're my kitty. <laughs> that was the first song I like wrote. Um, but then when I was tasked by my friends. That's great. <laughs> That's great. Wow. I like, I don't want to say that was mine because I was a kid. So maybe I saw it on like a show or something. Yeah. But I don't know. I thought I maybe wrote it. How old were you? I don't know. Five? Yeah. Six? I don't know. Wow. Yeah. Uh, it's weird. It's, some of the, it's, it's so interesting. Some of the things you remember, you know, mm -hmm. I think as I'm, as I'm getting older and, you know, some things get fuzzy. Yeah. But then some things just stay crystal clear. And it's, yeah, it's so interesting. Well, there's that thing that you were talking about as well, that it's, it's time travel. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. Because it brings you right back to that that yeah. space, right? Well, and talking about, you know, writing writing music and music kind of being that, you know, that, that, that outlet and mm -hmm. the only outlet that can, you know, express or um, mm -hmm. get out those emotions, mm -hmm. right? Convey, you know, what you're feeling. Um, oh, I forget actually what I was going to say now. Well, I was talking about time travel, <laughs> oh, music being time travel. Yes. And so you, I think music has a really crazy ability. And, and I think, you know, sometimes sense can do this too. Yeah. Um, but you can listen to a song or if you've written a song, especially that's like, that's the biggest thing. Um, but you can remember what you may have been going through and, you know, you can remember where you were. Yeah. Um, and it's just like, it was yesterday, like things come back so much clearer. I think that's probably also why people with, I think dementia mm -hmm. can make it when they hear a song that maybe they had listened to a lot when they were younger, mm -hmm. it can actually bring back certain like memories or ideas or emotions hmm. that they can't access otherwise. Yeah. It's pretty cool. That is cool. Yeah. Wow. So first song. No. Yeah. First song that I wrote. Mm -hmm. It's on YouTube. Uh, I don't know if I'll actually ever be able to release it uh, because the chorus. Have, do you ever have you ever read the book Holes or have you seen the movie? Shia LaBeouf. Yeah, seen I've it? seen part of it. Okay. I have not seen the full movie yet. Okay, I I read a I read the book when I was younger and mm -hmm. um, the the there's a poem in it that always kind of like hung around in my mind. Mm -hmm. Uh, and it's, if only, if only the woodpecker sighed, the bark on the tree was as soft as the sky, as the wolf waits below, hungry and lonely, crying to the moon, if only, if only. And so as I started writing my first song, I wanted to unpack that poem. Mm -hmm. And so I made it the chorus of a song and it's on YouTube. It has like, I don't know. I, it was like, I, I just posted it. Is that where Wolf, and, Shea Wolf comes from? No, okay. no. Uh, Wolf is my mom's maiden name. Okay. Yeah, Shaylin is my middle name. Okay. My first name is Trista. Welcome here, Trista. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> um, but you're not going to release it because copyright? Yeah, I just or? need to figure out the licensing. Uh -huh. um, but it was kind of the first song and talking about like, you know, listening to your friend perform a song um that was yeah. one of that a lot of my friends were like heard for the first time me you know expressing myself and uh and it, it has a very special place in my heart yeah mm -hmm. wow there's a phobia therapy where you actually are exposed to one of your like your biggest fears sure sure um and so exposure to things like fear doesn't learning and practicing that feeling fear doesn't necessarily mean that you shouldn't do it, mm -hmm. you know, like, um, it might be because you really want it, that you really want to do something. I think so. I also wonder, and this is for me, I wonder like, why, mm. why are you doing it? Why do you want to do it? Mm -hmm. You know, cause if it's, if it's because you have something inside you that you need to get out that's just like, just follow that resonant frequency, wherever that leads you mm -hmm. of like, 
if it's like breathing and like you don't know how to breathe yet, you have to learn, but you just want to breathe. You just mm -hmm. want to express mm -hmm. your truth mm -hmm. just to express it. Mm -hmm. But then I feel like so much, so we always, obviously, because we live in a world, you know, we do. And, you, <laughs> and, you, and there's all of these other reasons why you could want to pursue something or want to do something or, I mean, because we're probably, you're listening to some music that you like. Mm -hmm. And you think, I wish I could write music like that or play music like that or perform like that. But then there's also that part of you that's like, I wish I could be like that person, mm. you know? Mm -hmm. And that to me seems like um, they're, they're, it, it starts to get hazy mm -hmm. to follow that. I would rather follow like your, your own path. What's yeah. your path? Because you're not going to be that person. Yeah. You know? Yeah. I think that's a big kind of... Um, evolution of myself as an artist mm -hmm. that I am still in the process of but I remember you know before you have the confidence in yourself in any in any area mm -hmm. before you have the confidence I think it's really natural to look at what you lack and and know that you might not be the best and so and so does it better and mm -hmm. and then you really get stuck in this mind of comparison and yeah. And it's an awful place to be. Yeah. Um, but I think, you know, a goal of mine last year was just to just to get out and just perform more. And through that performance, I really found like a, a comfort in performing. And, and through and through that, those uncomfortable experiences, not that performing is uncomfortable, but it can be um, nerve wracking. Mm -hmm. You know, you you prepare and and, you know, if you get a slightly like bigger or like just like a little bit more um, like a, a different venue than you've played before or yeah, something. Yeah. You know, there, there might be different nerves or somebody might be there that you want to do well for or whatever it is. Mm, mm -hmm. um, but I found like a huge freedom of letting go of how I compare yeah. and just really showing up as myself and giving everything to what I was creating in that moment on stage for people. Wow. Which is, I want to explore even more. So talking about like leaning in and pursuing like that is fun. Yeah. 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 And especially like if it's, I mean, it's like a muscle, mm -hmm. right? And when you start growing and developing a muscle that, that you're like, oh, I have the capacity to grow and develop this muscle. This mm -hmm. isn't just... You know, this isn't now becoming uh, tiresome or repetitive. Like mm -hmm. I'm finding new depth, new, you know, I always mm -hmm. think about it like when you, you know, in my mind, at least you're, you're opening a door into like a beautiful field of flowers and you're like, oh, wow, I could just keep going and going. And mm -hmm. like, where would this all, where could it lead? Where could it go? Yeah. You know? Yeah, except I think, I think too, I love learning curves. Mm -hmm. um, I like, I don't know if you've ever learned a language or anything like this, but any, actually any, anything you learn. Sure, sure. Um, you know, I feel like in order to get to that bed of flowers, mm -hmm. you have a mountain to climb and mm. it's like, it can be hard. Yeah. You know, and you're like, you, you try to remind yourself like, there's this field of flowers, at the top, it's going to be worth it, but it's like step after step after step. And, but a little bit by a little bit, the mountain becomes less like this and a little bit more like this. Yeah. And then by the time you reach that bed of flowers, you're like running. Yeah. Because you've like, you, you like, you, you've done it, you know, you've, you've, you've gotten there yourself and wow. it's just like more rewarding. For me, it's like the opposite. Really? Yeah. For me, it's like bed of flowers first. And I'm like, this is amazing. <laughs> I love, it for, it's like creative. I love being yeah. creative, right? Right. And then, I'll, and then all of a sudden I'm like, oh, there's a mountain. I don't want to climb that mountain. <laughs> I, know. I like the flowers. Uh, yeah. I like being creative. I'm, I think that's a really good place to be. Yeah. To be honest. Mm -hmm. Cause, because sometimes I can let the, that mountain uh, prevent me from getting started. I'm like, Oof. yeah. And you don't know how big that mountain is. Yeah. 
until you're kind of like learning it. Sometimes it's smaller than you think. Yeah. And I, I, at any stage, whether it's you that starts in your bed of flowers, <laughs> or me that's at the, at the base of the mountain. <laughs> But yeah, I also think it's for me, it's just like, it's a testament to just how lazy I am. Uh, you know, I'm just like, I like to be creative. I like to enjoy it. And then I'm like, I don't need to take this all the way. Yeah. You know? Yeah. I think that's good. I, I was trying to, I was re, try, not trying. I was reminding myself yeah. the other day of, I, you know, I just seeing kids and how open they are and, yeah. you know, like how okay it is to fail and to make mm -hmm. mistakes, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know, and just like enjoy the journey. Yeah, totally. Yeah. Like, so yeah, just, just, just trying it. You know, I had a new piano student yesterday that was so excited about piano. Mm -hmm. They weren't thinking about what, like, what am I, like all the things that they don't know. Mm -hmm. They were like, I'm in piano today and I was like that's pretty that's pretty nice it's yeah. pretty beautiful yeah I'm definitely in pursuit of that mm -hmm. it, all the time like I'm I feel like that's really where I'm at now is just how do I live my life structure my life build my life how do I how do I become more intentional about just being in the moment that I'm in Mm. whether it's a good moment a bad moment like just to be here be mm -hmm. here in this space mm -hmm. you know and appreciate it in its in its fullness mm -hmm. um so mm. for you it must really feel like i mean in a way you're like you're this process of of discovery of discovering who you are as an artist is also this process of sort of like shedding layers in a way Mm -hmm. holding on to some things that that you learned growing up and now also other things sort of letting yourself make mistakes or not mm -hmm. be perfect you mm -hmm. know whereas it sort of seems like the sort of rural conservatory path is like don't make mistakes mm -hmm. be perfect that's how to succeed mm -hmm. right yeah yeah I, yeah there there is like I'm exploring the freedom of creativity mm -hmm. You know, so I've always been creative and I've always, I've, I've been able to appreciate pain and beauty, mm -hmm. you know, which, which I bring into my art, which is one of the reasons that I need to express myself, yeah. you know, um, and having that, exp being able to explore that facet of myself where I can I can just I can just create and do um, it's pretty cool mm -hmm. um, there is you know trying to create a business around creativity mm. um, and learning to balance you know business and creativity the, yeah. there there are two things um, I haven't quite figured it all out yeah. yet but um, I'm enjoying the process of balancing the two yeah yeah and being careful not to always go back or not not back but like um and lose that you know and continue to explore that freedom and that you know yeah. that creativity yeah. yeah as an artist yeah navigating through things and and wanting to reach as many people um with the things that you feel and and that honest expression that you have of of the world mm -hmm. um, and then asking questions of how can I how can how can how can this impact more people mm -hmm. that, that's kind of how I view it yeah yeah less less like um, commodification and <laughs> and business and yeah. and everything although you know that's important I would like to earn a living with music yeah um, and I know a lot of artists, you know, are more like, like, hey, like, you know, it's all good. Um, but I, you know, I want to be um, honest with myself. Yeah. Um, where it, anything can be on the table. Um, art, finances, 
relationships. It's all interwoven into my life. Mm. Um, and I feel lucky and grateful that it's my life yeah. that I am living. Oh, cool. <laughs> so, so with sort of where you're at now with the, the life that you've lived starting in sort of Saskatchewan, going to Kelowna, coming to Winnipeg. I lived in Costa Rica for a few months. Living in Costa Rica for a little while. <laughs> um, and, and your journey with, with music, with art, with expression, creativity. At this point in your life, do you have, is there a central sort of guiding principle? What's your message to the world? When, when people would always ask me, you know, what do you want to be when it was, I got a little bit older and I felt like there was this weight and this pressure to choose one thing and I never wanted to be one thing. I used to, you know, I, maybe I would say something to appease whoever was asking me, mm -hmm. um, but throughout it all and to this day, well, it's changed a little bit. I used to actually always say that I want to be happy. And that was kind of my, that was my goal. And so I use that to reflect on, you know, whether a next step or a path is right for me. But I, I also think that happiness isn't, isn't always the, maybe the ideal. Because ha ha you can be happy, but there's also sadness. Um, and so now I think it's kind of shifted um, as I just, my guiding force is what makes you feel at peace um, hmm. and kind of like choosing your next steps or your day or your, you know, your right now uh, with that. And that's kind of how I, that's kind of what I want to bring into my songwriting. Um, it's not always happy. It's not always sad. Um, but I want there to be beauty in, in kind of it all and in, in kind of the mess of, being a, a human being. Wow. So what, what brings you peace? The people in my life, uh, appreciation, being able to sing, play piano, huge, huge um, markers of peace for me. Um, my animals, just like, just kind of, you know, I, I, I did a, I self, uh, I did a 30 day songwriting challenge, mm -hmm. a self guided one. And, uh, one, one of the, one of the songs I wrote, which I'm excited about, I don't know, maybe I'll be performing it at festivals this summer, but, mm -hmm. um, it was called, or it was called, um, is this what happy feels like? And it's about just this kind of taking in of your life and your environment and me, it was, I was just washing the dishes and I was just, my, my husband and my dog were playing in the backyard and I was just thinking about dishes and then I was like watching them and feeling happy. Then I was kind of thinking about like the cracks that we have in our wall yeah. <laughs> and I was like, it's okay. Like I don't have to solve it all. Yeah. Um, like I'm, I'm content with, with now, yeah. Wow, that's awesome. Mm -hmm. I know that, yeah, I, I definitely, with my wife and my kids, I, I definitely, I stop my kids sometimes and I look at them and I let them know, like, just so you know, like, you're gonna look back on this. Mm -hmm. Like, you're gonna, you're gonna wish you had this moment again, this childhood. Mm -hmm. this, these are the good old days. That's so crazy to think. What a, what a ride to be a parent, I feel. Yeah. A tough thing about being a parent is you hold, you, I mean, for me at least, a lot of the time we hold our kids and we're just like, we just are like, never get older. <laughs> you know, yeah. stay here, don't yeah. change. And like, that does, that does, that's not really enjoying or appreciating the moment, you know? Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Do you ever, like, do you struggle with, like, the passing of time? Like, does it, do you find it goes by too quickly? 
No, I don't feel like it's a rush. I do feel like if I'm too busy, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. then it moves too quickly. Yeah. You know? Um, like, if my day is filled... If there's too many things on my list, if I have a to-do list that's too long mm -hmm. and I can't get it done, mm -hmm. and as I'm trying to get stuff done, other things are piling up, mm -hmm. you know? If I don't have time to just be present or explore or, you know? Right now, what I like to do is I like to do, I in, in the morning, Part of my routine, I like to sit down and, and do breathing for about, mm -hmm. you know, 12 to 15 minutes. Mm -hmm. And I like to do it in the afternoon, mm. you know? And I feel like if I can do that, that, there are things, I love a routine. Yeah. You know, for me, my routine really makes me feel um, uh, at peace, I yeah. guess. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Um, we did do, we did a, we, we just went to... Um, Orlando over oh, Christmas. Yeah, so amazing. we did Disney World with our kids for the first time. Wow. And that was one day at Magic Kingdom. And it was, you know, but it, it also just feels like sometimes, yeah, then the passage of time is crazy because you're just like, you know, you're just waiting in lines and doing, like, you're overwhelmed. <laughs> sometimes when life is overwhelming, then time I, I don't have a handle on it, mm -hmm. you know, but I feel like in my life now, I'm more present, aware, accepting, mm -hmm. you know, and the wild thing for me about this breathing mm -hmm. is if I can sit and accept and relax. I just feel so much love. Mm -hmm. It just starts to like overflow. I just feel so, and again, not that I need to like look at everyone and make every moment the most important thing, but I'm just there. Mm -hmm. I'm just ready to be there with everyone, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. It's such a gift to have those, like, I, I don't know if uh, the, I, the idea that I have, like when I say I want to be, at peace or you know like yeah. i want to grow up and be at peace mm -hmm. i think those mindfulness practices have really changed what that means yeah for me yeah you know and, and in such a subtle um and beautiful way you yeah. know um extremely accessible to anybody 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 yeah yeah everyone has the time mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I once heard somebody uh, like a yoga teacher uh, and, and musician, Keith McPherson. Do you know mm -mm. Keith? Okay. Um, but, you know, those days where you feel like are so busy, you know, you've got things and I can't even imagine what it'd be like with kids and their, you know, yeah. their days and needs and, yeah. you know, everything. Um, but the days where it's like I couldn't possibly squeeze in a second. Yeah. Uh, are the days that you need mindfulness and and yeah. that coming back to your your sense in your center um, the most, you know, you, yeah. you know, and it's it's a good reminder. So I, I often think I'm like, oh, like, you know, I'm so like my head's everywhere. And I'm like, you know, trying to keep track of all the things. And then, um, you know, when sometimes you're in a rush and you like need to get out the door and you're like running around and then you like spill a glass of water and then like you drop your keys or like yeah and just like the faster you go it doesn't necessarily mean that you're gonna get there any faster yeah sometimes and it takes a, it's a practice of some restraint and some like feeling settled and centered yeah yeah and the wild thing is i mean it's a practice but it's like a daily you have to do it every day. Mm -hmm. It's like, you're never going to get there. Yeah. You know? Because mm -hmm. you're there. Yeah. You can either be there or you cannot be there. Yeah. You know? It's really up to you whether or not you want, where, how you want to be experiencing your life. Because mm -hmm. you're going to, if you're pursuing, if you're living your life, you're playing your role mm -hmm. no matter what. Mm -hmm. And like, 
yeah, it's just, I don't know. I don't have any processed thoughts about this at all. <laughs> this is a new thing for me. So I'm just yeah. like, yeah, I'm just like, it's, it's really opening everything up. You've inspired me too. I, for a while I was uh, doing a 10 minute meditation on YouTube every mm -hmm. morning. And, uh, and then sometimes just bit by bit, I'm like, oh, I'll just, I'll, you know, I won't do it yeah. right now or, yeah. or, or just the, the habit. I, I also really like, um, habits, mm -hmm. especially cause I, I love to travel. And, um, if, if I tour as a musician and, and go different places, I really need, I think to have these established anchors, mm -hmm. um, these feelings of home. Mm -hmm. you know that doesn't matter where you are mm -hmm. um to come back to yeah um and yeah i forget what i'm saying now but <laughs> no <laughs> uh, oh yeah i just want to i think uh, like you've inspired me to start those meditations again and just um just sit you know with myself for 10 yeah. minutes a day I mean, if you do, you do. If you don't, you don't. I feel like I'm like, the problem is I, I'm, I'm loving it so much. So I'm starting to proselytize about it. And I got to not, I got to just, it's for Sorry, me. Sorry, what is proselytize? Like evangelize. I'm trying to share it with people and I want everyone to do Oh this. yeah. Everyone I talk to, I'm like, have yeah. you tried mindfulness breathing? Because it's amazing. <laughs> it will change your life. I felt the vibration of the universe the other day. It was, yeah. Oh, um, I've, I've, yeah. But it, it really is like, um, it, like, I think it can be that, like, just mind-blowing sometimes, you know? Especially if yeah. you've never, like, experienced it before, and, yeah. Yeah. But. Yeah. No, we could talk and talk. <laughs> I could, yeah. Um, Shay, it's been so lovely to sit down with you uh, over a cup of coffee. Thank you so much. Thanks for taking the time. I'm excited to see... I'm excited to meet you. Thank you so much. Yeah. But also excited to see sort of where you go as you continue to explore and discover your artistic self, your artistic voice. Um, thank you so much for taking the time. Thank you so much for taking the time. Cheers. Cheers. Cheers.